Belcher Beach, the winter version. Soon they have to uh, start with the summer version again, I feel. <laughs> we have at the bottom right in the red colors our Protoss player. It is Killer. Perfectly right. A little bit disappointed after the last game. He won the first map and lost the second. And here at the top left, we have our Chinese player. It looks a little bit like a Chinese mobster, to be honest. I like it. <laughs> Killer in Gaming Shigua. Shigua actually means there we go. watermelon. Yeah, exactly. It means watermelon. And we were already just uh, quizzing a little bit about why would you name yourself watermelon. And there was a nice theory. We talked about the other Zergs. We had Fruit Dealer. Fruit <laughs> Dealer and the watermelon. Uh, we haven't seen Fruit Dealer perform as good as he did in uh, the first GSL for quite a while. So maybe, <laughs> maybe our Chinese player stole a huge watermelon out of the food basket and now has a huge chunk of skill that he uses in order to, uh, well, scare his GSL <laughs> Protoss opponents. Yeah, uh, a little bit far-fetched, I agree, but still. I, yeah, I, d <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't want to... I, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit far I didn't want to say it, but yeah, you're right. It's stupid. <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a curious name to, to be watermelon. If you're a watermelon, you know, if someone if people want to eat watermelons, but they have to spill the seeds, it's kind of inconvenient, okay? Um, you know, watermelons are, they're big, but they're also kind of fragile. Like, if you drop a watermelon from a, a decent height, it might shatter. Killer has been doing this double cannon uh, stuff. <laughs> Why is he doing that? <laughs> I mean, you're perfectly, it's a perfectly valid point to talk about the double cannon style, but at the same time, you just, you just kind of blame me for, for just going on a rant. At the same time, you do it, and then this, this flawless transition in, into <laughs> from yeah, watermelons are big, and Killer is building two cannons. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is, man. He built two cannons. His opponent did go for an earlier pool and made six lings, but uh, he's not only has he known that he was going to be able to delay lings with the with the probe because he saw them. I don't know. It's just there's something about it where I guess. I mean, you, you don't, I mean, I'm trying to find a reason, I'm like, well, I mean, I guess if he doesn't all in later, he knows he's safe, but you can just make the cannon later, that's fine. The only reason that I could come up with right now is that he wants to uh, start some kind of tech that he wants to hide from his opponent, so he builds the two cannons early on to be super, super um, safe in order to prevent circling run bys. Because with one cannon and uh, six circlings, there can still be a couple of circlings entering your main base. If you keep them alive, they are able to spot your transition. Yeah, so that's actually a good point, because we maybe. had, you know, like on the on the first game on Daybreak, DTs. he had the DTs, and that's a really good point. And this may be, you know, it's it, we, it took us a little while to kind of figure that out, but actually, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that it makes sense that that would be the case, but with good micro, we can still stop the run bys, but absolutely with two, no matter what, the links will not get inside. There's no way. And that may actually tip Shigua off. He's thinking about it the same way. He may go, hmm, well, last time this happened, you did some sneaky tech. I wonder what he's uh, going to think about this. So we'll see. Looks like a fast third is going to be planted by Shigua. Pretty smart for this base. Yeah, no surprise here. Trying to get the fast third. And once again, just making, making sure that there's no probe anywhere. He has overlords in position. He's scouting the whole map with the Zerglings. And he knows fully well that there's just nothing that Killer has on the map. He right has now. literally an entire line of vision that goes from the left side of the map to the right side of the map. There's no way for anything to sneak by his, his vision. Now the core is done, and we do have Killer with a decent amount of gas up. I think you may see that Twilight Council be thrown down here in just a moment. And the core is built to the far right, so he's building it right where his... He is in a pylon over there to the back where he can hide buildings now. He built the core and now transitioning into the robotics facility. Yeah, he, he made a robo, which is a little bit unusual. Again, we saw him do that warp prism timing attack earlier. Yeah. Uh, this time, I think he'll time it better if he goes for that same attack. He may be trying to throw his opponent off, though. In most cases, you don't see your body facility this early, but... Yep. The That's overlord the overlord. Scout. <laughs> Only one gas. Trying to get in there. Sees the gas and is immediately repelled by the stalker. Did not see the robotics. No. Latek is going up for Shigo now. He is droning up. The third is about to finish. We have him on 42. Harvest is already adding another 8. And there's the Warp Prism. So once again, he's trying to make some Warp Prism moves. Yeah, we'll see what he does. He's looks like he's going to put those same units into the Warp Prism. Three Zealots and a Stalker. Which yep. is the third Zealot on the way. Just exactly as he did it last game. 
And the gateway is being added on time this time, though, by the looks of things. One gateway being added first here, and I think he's going to add, yeah, this time it's going to make much more sense. The warp gate research and the gateway should finish around the same time. Yeah, that lines up a lot better than it did in the uh, than in regards to the second map. Yeah, absolutely. And he's actually done a good job of chasing these learnings away, but at the last second they come and see the prism. And this is going to make him stop drone production and start getting those Zerglings out. His Zergling speed, though, Keller, is only halfway done. And in total right now, he only has 5 out on the map. He's going to have 15 when these 10 finish. But he is going to be pretty hard-pressed to hold the 6, 7 gateways being added. Now he's going up to 8 gateways. Once and this again. attack is going to be so hard, just like last time. But this time, the timing is much better. And he may warp, actually, into the main base if he decides to. Too many Zerglings already in position. He needs to be careful with his warp present. He's not... He can't afford to lose it again. No. He just can't afford to lose it again. The lair tech is done, and we have, once again, the speed for the Roaches. And there it is, the warp present once again sneaking in. I think he may warp here. Yes. I think he's going to do it. He's targeting down the spawning pool. Oh, this is actually so interesting. He's not going to stop speed. And he's not warping in units, he's been warping in units at home during this instead, just like last game. So it looks like he does not want to commit to that first wave attack. He's just going to continue the harassment. If he can get the spawning pool, that'll be very frustrating. He's actually coming back in here yet again. Yep, once again, trying to target down the spawning pool, doing some damage, trying to put on the pressure. And Killer is building Immortals. He's trying to go for the same push that he used on the second map. And ladies and gentlemen, Zerglings in the main base of his opponent. There they are, the pool is dead, but there are a couple of links now just attacking the probes at the main, but the warp in puts an end to it. She oh got 116 God. supply against 82. Keldor, he has no Zerglings out right now, and with no spawning pool to remake them, he's got just four out. If he goes and attacks now, those four, by the way, are in the main base. He's actually sitting at home when he has a beautiful timing here. He's not actually even utilizing. Oh, I just, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, he could just go and win. There's no Zerglings and he knows there's no spawning pool, but instead, He's staying at home. So he's waiting for the third immortal again. Yeah, he's waiting for that third immortal. I really feel that uh, Shiko's run by has saved him so much in this game. Without that being there, without that threat that Killer had to return home for, he would not be able to hold the pressure. And also, uh, it was a good time to go oh. because he knew Killer was microing in his main base. He knew he wouldn't be paying attention. It's kind of interesting. He moved out, but. Tried to attack again with this warp prism and realized how many roaches there were already. Shigo, of course, being forced to build roaches instead of zerglings because he didn't have a spawning pool. So Killer builds another immortal, waits a little bit longer before he moves out. The plus one armor is about to finish. He's already trying to transition into the robotic spay. While Shigo is now building the spire, and we will see the attack by Killer in just a few seconds. I'm not quite sure if he has the numbers though. I don't. I don't think he does, man. I, I, if you look at the supply, I mean, it's a much larger supply for Shigo. He has units designed to kill Shigo's units. He knows the Zerling count is going to be quite low here. Uh, or would, would have been if he had gone immediately, because now it's actually going to be up to about 60 Zerlings out. But I'm not sure if that is enough, Wolf, to tell you the truth. Only 8 Zerg and 8 sentries, and at the same time, he can flank his opponent whenever he pleases to do so. Killer has been stuck on two bases for too long already. Yeah, he has a... Robotic support bay finishing up, so he will be able to he make a Colossus, but... He missed the timing, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did it, and it's weird because he did the exact same build twice, and neither time did he really react to what his opponent was doing. He just executed it in the exact same way. He probably practiced it, but he didn't adapt to what he was able to do. He killed the pool, but if he didn't make use of that timing, Aww. killing the pool for the Zealots that he lost and the Stalker that he lost wasn't even worth it, and... I don't like that at all. I don't like this either. He's in a bad situation. I think... He's got the Warp Prism out to float around. He doesn't even know about the Spire yet, though, and he's making Colossi. I mean, 12 Mutalists are being built now, ladies and gentlemen. 13 of them. We don't have extended Thermal Lands just yet. Shigo has already maxed out. He's on three bases. He will take a fourth very, very soon. And Killer is just sitting tight on two bases. Wow. This is going to hit him pretty hard. The fourth base being built now at the top right for the Zerg player. And we have plus two one. attack finishing. 91 Zerglings out on the map as well. He does have a decent amount of Zealots, but those Zerglings are just going to do so much distracting. And the War Prism does get taken out, but I don't think Killer minds because now he knows they're immune. He starts blink immediately. He may even want to cancel that Colossus range to get more Stalkers out because... Oh god, look at the minimap. There they are, the Zerglings, 91 of them, the Roaches as well. Is he really trying to attack into the choke point? Well, at this point, he might as well, considering how ahead he is. I think he's 
He's going to, to back off here, but one thing to note, Keldor, is he hasn't seen the third Nexus. So the third Nexus may somehow finish over here on the left side. I don't... I don't see how. He could just attack it. He doesn't know about it. You're perfectly right. And the Mutalists in the main base don't achieve anything as there are enough cannons for Killer. A move that I like, by the way. Building the cannons in the main base is just so smart. That's something that Protoss players have just starting to do uh, over the last few weeks, maybe the last two months. And I really like it because it just helps you a little bit with attack, uh, with defending against the Mutalists, which is just so, so difficult if you're a Protoss player. Especially if you don't have Blink just yet. No, absolutely. The Mutalist count is actually only up to 14 now. He hasn't really been adding very many into there. It looks like he wants to go for a more Roach heavy composition. And the spining has begun. Nine spine crawlers finishing up now. So he's going to start pushing those forward with his army. I'm kind of surprised we don't see an infestation pit just yet, but I think we will fairly soon here because Killer's army is getting to be quite sizable at this point. He wasn't able to really do a lot of damage like he wanted to with that Mutalist switch. And it looks like Shigua is going to try to target down the Colossi with his Mutas as they move forward, but I think this army now for Killer is actually large enough to combat this. Oh, oh nice no. Blink. Beautiful Blink, but there are the Zerglings. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen. The Force fails are far from being perfect, but the roads at least are stuck in the back, and he's not microing his Mutalists at all. They're, most of them are being taken out by the Stalkers, and the third base is done. Something that I really don't like. Shigo with a huge mistake, not spotting the third and killing it while he had the chance to do so. Here comes the Infestation Pit that Wolf just demanded. Once again, Shigua is maxed out, now running past his opponent's army to take on the third, but Killer with 174 supply is definitely getting back into this game. Oh yes he is, he blinks his stalkers forward, they're doing a lot of damage now, and I think Killer, you said it best when you said that, I mean, I, I agree with you entirely, and that's not spawning that third base is the biggest mistake Shigua has made this game. Oh, he's lost so many Zerglings here, six more Mutas on the way, he's trying to keep that Mutas count higher, but Nice splitting on the army by Killer. However, his Colossi are now going to be targeted down. Oh, nice blink in by Killer. And Killer, somehow, wow. some way, pushing his way through this game. Wolf, we have 31 Mutalists in just a second. He is going so Muta heavy now. Yeah, he is. But I, I really feel that with this amount of Stalkers now and with these sentries here, just the amount of Mortals and Colossi alone will deal with the Zerglings. And Roach is on the ground, but the... Mutas are going to have to go for a base trade, and that's exactly what they're doing here. He's going for the base trade situation while Killer is dealing with the spine crawlers Shigua built earlier. Right now, most of them are already dead and gone. There are three hatcheries at the natural. The macro hatches are about to die. Killer is down to 160 supply against 163. More and more mutalists are being built for Shigua. That's exactly what he wants now. He needs this mobile army, and he certainly has it. It's on five bases. Another base to the top right, one at the bottom left. He might be able to pull it off Shigua with a supply lead. And Killer's army is not as mobile as it should be. A lot of Blink Stalkers, but still some Immortals and Colossi that slow him down. Spire is being targeted now, so the last three Mutas are going to pop up. We'll put him at 33 Mutalists in total. He lost probably about 8 to 10 Mutas coming out of the Larva. They were just killed by the army of Killer, so that's something to note. Looks like the Mutalists now are going to try to come and catch these probes. The thing is, though, he's already got probes with his main army, so even if he loses all of these, which he won't, uh, the probes are still out on the map. The Stalker's now being split into two groups. One group will kill the, all the drones and the hatchery at the top right. Meanwhile, the main Stalker army is joining up with the main army to defend it from these Mutas. Whoa, there are the Mutalisks against the Stalkers. He's losing way too many Mutalisks. I think, Keldor, this is going to be the first time I've ever seen a Protoss win a base trade <laughs> on Belcher Beach. Yeah, it might well be. Yes, Shigua might have roughly the same supply than his opponent, but he's so far... Well, Killer is so far ahead when he comes down to the army supply. He, so, Shigua can't fight his opponent. He only has 22 Mutalisks left, and we have 40 Stalkers. Killer hasn't even made any structures just yet out in the middle of the map. More Mutas being taken out here. He's wow. trying to micro them, but it's, no way. it's just not going to work exactly. No way. The Overlord's at the top, and a funny little line <laughs> trying Overlord to... Dance. <laughs> trying to escape the Stalkers, but they can't quite do it. And now, the final Mutalisk will fall by the looks of things. The Muta count now down to 15. There is one mining base up for Shigua at the bottom left, but I think Killer, obviously, since he's killed all the other hatcheries, has realized this. Notice he's getting the extractors down. If he can kill the extractors, there will not be much else to find. Killer has to be a little bit careful, though. At the bottom right, we have still a lot of Zerglings and units killing his main base, so he shouldn't take it too lightly. Yeah, he's got to protect his probes. Uh, 
the probes actually are really now they're they're moving with the iron, but they were unprotected there for a little while. He does still have a few structures left in his main. He just has not found the hatchery of Shigua. He needs to find that. He's working on these drones. He didn't even look for it, to be honest with you. Yeah, he only sent stalkers to the top right to look for structures. He did not go look for this hatchery on the left. I think now he realizes what's going on. He's actually moving back. Looks like he's going to clean up these zerglings before he moves forward here. And the last few weird. buildings at the bottom right get killed by the roaches and the stalkers. The pylon that has been built by Killer just a second ago is now being targeted down by the mule. If Killer is going to lose this, I, I, I don't know what to say. I actually don't know what to oh say. Oh my god, he actually needs to build a structure now as his last structure is being destroyed. Oh There's my iron god! Alex Core. Okay, he starts a pylon. Wow. Okay, that was a close call, that guys. That is the last pylon that is the last build. pylon. He and can build in a Shigua, simulator. Shigua, uh, Shigua sees it. Yeah, he can build in the simulator. He's going to take down the hatchery. But all it takes is the mutas to target down the pylon. He's got one chance. If no. he can kill this pylon, he, he can't. Can. He can win, but he, I just don't think he can. He only has nine mutas out, and there are more than 40 stalkers, aren't there? 37, 37 stalkers. He can still build an assimilator, but we have the hatchery for Shigua. 27 supply, ladies and gentlemen, against 127. He is 100 supply ahead. Yeah, and it looks like the hatchery still has not been spotted. The, the uh, mutas are going to find the immortal that's looking for the hatch. And there is, oh, there's an extractor at the top as well that was built. I didn't realize that. Okay, so he still has two structures left and entirely five drones. And he's he can building make two another hatch. Extractors. There's another hatch at the top right. Yeah, and he's after that, he's got four drones and the ability to make two more extractors. And he will start mining. Yeah, but the thing is, I think with just these stalkers alone, we can protect the pylon. I'd like to see Killer put a probe next to the assembly so we can start one. Uh, as soon as possible. Killer should not lo lo lose this game. He should not. I, I really would like to see him just to be safe, have a probe next to an assimilator so he can make that instantly, but uh, it looks like he's cleaned up everything now in the bottom of the map. He still hasn't found the hatchery at the top right, though, and there is a stalker group heading for it. And Shigua knows that's all he has to do to win this, but he's he's still hesitating to do it. He knows it probably won't work, and I frankly, I don't blame him for not trying at this point, but... That's the only thing he can do. Taking damage on those Mews is not going to help. Yeah. But you're right. We should see a probe next to a... All right. Now the hatchery has been spotted. He may go for the pile on no. GG. GG. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Shigua GG's out of the game. We have a 2 to 1 win for Killer, and he is quite happy. He had a very, very bad season last time. He dropped out of Code S. He lost his up and down matches, and now he was close to being eliminated with a 1 1 in the series after two games. Uh, there he is, advancing to the next round of Code, and, well, visibly, visibly happy about it. Yeah. Relief. I mean, that's relief right there. there. Was, he was seconds away from losing that game. Yeah. Oh my god. And he waited until the last second before he placed down that final. I was like, what? Um, I, I wonder what Shigua's future in Korea will be now. I do not know where he was staying. Uh, I heard, you know, he had planned to stay with the FX Open House, but that fell through. Um, there was a thread about that. Um, and I don't know where he ended up staying. I wonder if he's planning on staying in Korea to try to requalify. If he's going to practice or if he's going to go back to China. I, I'm really curious. I don't know. I'm sure we'll, we'll hear about it. It'll come out. I'm sure he'll make a statement. There'll be an interview or something like that. But I'm just curious. I wanted to say I'm he curious about that. He did very well. He did very well, yeah. nonetheless. So the Absolutely. last game was very killer. close. Yeah, exactly. ex code S player, and he did so well. He uh, won one map, and the last game was really, really close as well. So Killer takes it with 2-1 to one after all. But in the end, Shigua put up a valiant effort. And yeah, it's kind of sad that we don't see him anymore in Korea. We had really interesting builds from Killer, I have to say. You know, he did the very early Dark Templar in the first game, and then the other games he had a very specific three zealot, one stalker harassment pattern, followed up by a timing attack in the second game, and then the third set he decided not to. But uh, we're going to take an eight-minute break, uh, you know, an unusual number of minutes this time. Not five, we've got it's not ten, it's eight. Yeah, eight, uh, about eight minutes and ten seconds. See you guys after the break.